Hello, this is Angela with Parker's Permaculture. It is an uncomfortably hot afternoon here in Portland, Oregon. We're having a heat wave. I am sitting outside trying to keep cool, um, failing a little bit. I'm in the backyard of my garden here under the pergola where it's a little bit cooler. I'm enjoying watching some battles between some scrub jays and also listening to my ducks who are you know, also a little bit freaked out by it. I'm enjoying a glass of beer. I am working on a project. This is a project I've talked about a number of times. I have two rescue standard poodles, Athena and Apollo. And Apollo, we let his hair grow out quite long in the winter and then I brush it all the way through the early spring. And usually about Mother's Day weekend, he gets a haircut for the summer. And when I brush his hair, I collect it and I save it because I have been intending to comb that hair, spin it and knit it into something. If you look at the little hair, let me show you. I've done one box already, but since it's nice and hot and sunny and I'm out here anyway, dusty project with little bits of dog hair, I'm working on my second box. So this is what his hair looks like. And if you look at a piece of it, here we go. It has a very long staple. So again, we don't cut his, his hair uh, in the fall and the winter and we let it get quite long. It's a really long staple, right? And it spins up very much like wool. You can see the kink in it. Look at that. And so when I comb it, it spins up quite nicely. It is something that I have done for quite a while. We used to have a white poodle who passed away of old age. She was 16 and her hair was quite nice to spin and then I could dye it. But Apollo's is black and so I'm gonna try to think about what I wanna make out of it. I've asked you guys in the past and I need to see how much this spins up into. So what I'm working on today is the fiber has been washed. It is, um, you know, it, it's been sitting in a box for a while and I'm ready to comb it. So combing is where you prepare the fibers and you get them all aligned. I made a video where I showed you how I made these combs with my dad and you use the combs to align the fibers. You can see when I brush Apollo that it comes off, you know, like in, in clumps, you pick it off, off the dog brush and all those fibers need to be organized and that helps me be able to draft them easily when I'm spinning and get a nice consistent spin. So that's what I'm working on. I really find that handwork, especially preparing fiber for spinning and then spinning is very, very meditative. It's very soothing. I often listen to a podcast and it's something I can do where a little bit of my brain can kind of get turned off and it's that repetitive, soothing motion that I'm doing. So it may seem kind of boring or like, why on earth would you save your dog's hair and then comb it and then spin it and then knit it when you could just buy some yarn at the store or you could just buy a hat or whatever. For me, I find a lot of meaning in creating things myself and I find a lot of meaning in being able to repurpose things that otherwise would be seen as waste, like dog hair. Being able to think very intentionally about how I'm using resources for my home and my garden that would otherwise be considered waste, right? And no, it's not gonna save the planet. No, it's not gonna fix climate change. No, individuals are not responsible to fix the climate crisis. And no, we should not have the burden put on us to figure out how to live a perfectly sustainable life while corporations get giant tax exemptions for polluting and exploiting workers. Um, my neighbor's air conditioner's kicking on because it's, it's that hot out. So for me, it's more of a practice that I find really enjoyable and meaningful, but it also helps keep me in a mindset of how can I be resourceful and how can I be novel and uh, tuned in to the way I can use my resources and the way that I can create resources out of waste products. It helps me have my focus in every aspect of my life of how can I reduce my footprint? How can I reduce my harm? How can I make my trash not somebody else's problem? How can I make my issues not somebody else's problem? So yes, there's a lot of meaning and symbolism packed into this small project, but I think that for me, the more I try and be intentional in any aspect of my life, the more I find it's easier 
and it comes more naturally to want to focus on sustainability and to focus on justice and to focus on equity and to focus on not only my own wants and needs, but to consider the needs of those around me and the needs of people who have not even been born yet, future generations, right? So with all of that heavy, heavy stuff, if you have a handwork that you enjoy, if you have some kind of like sustainable practice that you enjoy, you don't have to pile all of that intense meaning onto it. But for me, I find that it enhances the work that I'm doing. So let me show you what I'm doing. And then in the next video, I will get spinning. I'm starting here with two different kinds of fiber. This is from when I gave Apollo a haircut. So you can see it's not brushed. It has the nice curly locks totally intact. And then the second kind of fiber that I'm gonna be using is the brushings from his daily brush out while he has long hair. First, I need to load up my wool combs with some of the fiber. My goal here is to align all of the fibers and also comb out all of the little short bits that will itch and pill, and I will use those as compost in the garden later. When combing, I just wanna grab the very ends of the fiber just a little bit at a time. I'm not trying to comb all of the fiber from one comb to the other right away. You can see that I have the combs perpendicular and I'm always combing away from myself. I never wanna to comb toward myself. Those nails and pins are really sharp. So I'm catching those long fibers and slowly transferring them from one comb to the other. What gets left on the first comb are the shorter scraggly bits. Some folks just take those and straight up compost them. Some folks save them and do a second pass with them to get a little bit lower quality fiber that they will spin separately. Either way is totally fine and either way is making use of a resource. Once all of the fiber has been moved to one comb, I repeat the process, switch hands, start combing again. I'm gonna keep doing that until all of the fibers are untangled and aligned and all of those little shorty bits have been removed. You can see here my homemade combs, totally not perfect, not super even. This is the first time I've made wool combs. It will probably be the last, but look how well it combs out this fiber. I'm super happy with how these turned out and they are a really useful tool. Okay, it's very hot out right now. Um, a couple of things I wanna say about combing fiber. If it's in the winter and it's very dry out, what you find is that the fiber gets quite staticky. It is humid and hot out today, so I don't need to keep spritzing the fiber to reduce the static on it, but that is something that you might need if it is very dry where you are. Second thing is, while I'm combing, right? So I'm working on my little nest. While I'm, while I'm combing, there ends up being all of this Kind of seconds these are the these are the little nubbins that are too short or are left over with each pass of the comb i don't throw these out i can either use them to stuff things i can use them as mulch in the garden dog hair or human hair or wool makes a very good nitrogen rich mulch i can also give them a second pass with the combs and get a slightly less amazing quality yarn that might have a little bit more of a tendency to pill or be a little bit rougher so we'll see how I'm doing at the end, but I may end up recombing all of this to get a second little mini hank out of it. Okay, so normally I would use a diz. I would comb the wool or dog hair. I would transfer it to a hackle, and then I would use this tool you might have seen to help me draft and pull the fiber off so that it forms a nice neat little nest when I'm ready to spin. All of the fibers are aligned, it's much easier to spin. I had every intention of using this, but then I saw a YouTube creator that I really liked. I'm gonna link to her YouTube channel below. So she drafts by hand and she dizzes off with just her fingers. And I've never done that before. Since I'm outside, I don't have a place to really clamp down my hackle. I am gonna try it and see how it works. Just moving across and seeing if I can do it without dizzing. I'm sure it won't be as consistent as if I were using a diz. Oh, 
this is actually kind of nice. I wouldn't really want to try it unpracticed with a shorter staple. Okay, that's not too bad. So then I have my little ball. I always called it a nest and she calls it a floof and I love that and I will add that to my basket. So thanks for watching today. I hope that that was helpful for you guys. I hope that you got a little look into, you know, some of my eccentricities and some of the slowing down of living, some of the intentionality of handwork and those kind of traditional skills that I find really meaningful. If you have questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section and I will be back very soon with the next part of this project. Don't forget to click like and subscribe and check out the ways you can support this channel down below. Thanks.